Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rabbi Shahri Sadri wa Yasirli Amri. Wahlu Lukdatam Melisani of Kalkoli. This is your brother, Dr. Abu Isa. Kif Hadakum, inshallah. All of you are well. Um, just uh, wanted to uh, share some, some experiences. Um, and I guess it highlights what I'm trying to, uh, inshallah open up the conversation on how to integrate um, Islam uh, and uh, therapeutic interventions from the Quran and Sunnah um, alongside um, kind of the, the Western um, psychiatric uh, understanding and treatment modalities. Uh, so like I've mentioned in my videos, um, my, my aim is I'm very passionate about uh, mental illness and mental health and well-being. And um, I'm passionate about uh, advocating for, for the Muslim community to address this issue um, so that inshallah we can live a holistic and um, meaningful and happy lives. Because unfortunately, uh, mental illness uh, is increasing. The prevalence is increasing uh, worldwide and especially in the Muslim community. And I think one of the reasons um, uh, which I which I believe firmly is that as as a community we are going away from the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Quran and um, trying to follow uh, kind of um, Western uh, lifestyles and understandings and as a result that's negatively impacting on our on our, our mental health uh, because we know in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions. Uh, وَمَنْ بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً دَنْكَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises, and Allah's promise is true, that whoever um, lives a life devoid of the, his dhikr, he will definitely live a miserable life. And we, we see this, but unfortunately we don't open our eyes and we don't reflect. We see this amongst the celebrities, um, whether that be Hollywood, actors, actresses, singers, who have everything that dunya can offer them in terms of fame, in terms of wealth. Um, but subhanAllah, a lot of them fall into drug addiction, uh, depression, and uh, uh, a lot of them do end up uh, committing suicide. And we can give numerous examples of that. Um, and why, why is that the case? Because like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly defined in the Quran, that if you live a life without dhikr, without purpose, without what Allah created us for, uh, he promises a miserable life, a, a constricted and a, a, a tight, um, anxious life. And we see this, subhanAllah. And I, unfortunately, the Muslim community is also uh, affected by this. Um, so... Uh, yeah, I, I'll just give you a couple of like, two probably case examples where this integrated approach is, is vital um, because uh, sometimes medication and hospitalization are, are essential. Um, so one of the, the case examples, um, a friend of mine, he was asked to do uh, Rukia on a couple, uh, American, African-American couple living in the Middle East uh, because they were having some uh, issues. Uh, the wife had, had uh, personality change and they were, it was causing marital conflict. Anyway, um, so my friend, um, he went to do Rukia on this couple. And um, when he recited, he kind of took an initial history. So he's not a, he's not a medic. He's, he's uh, actually within the education field. So um, he took a brief history and uh, the husband mentioned and the wife confirmed that she'd been feeling uh, not her usual self over the past couple of months and um, kind of aggressive and, and just generally feeling uh, not her normal self. And that was causing a lot of issues between the husband and wife. Um, so anyway, so uh, my friend, he started uh, uh, reciting the Quran uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, and after a short while he noticed, or oh, he heard actually, um, a male voice um, which he didn't recognize, and subhanAllah when he looked up, uh, he, he realized that the sister 
she was actually uh, speaking in uh, Arabic in a male voice. And the important thing to recognize that this um, sister, she didn't know any Arabic. Um, and not only that, it was accompanied by a change in her posture. Uh, she became quite aggressive, started hissing, um, acting bizarrely. Uh, so subhanAllah, this, uh, this was uh, uh, quite a difficult situation for my friend. Um, so he continued to recite, and uh, as he continued to recite the Quran, um, Kalam Allah, um, she, this sister, she became increasingly agitated and distressed, and the jinn started conversing with my friend who spoke, speaks from Arabic, Allah Mabarik, and um, the jinn was basically, uh, the male voice was a jinn, um, and he started telling my friend that stop reciting the Quran because it's burning him. Uh, and at one point, um, she's tried to attack my friend and uh, her husband had to restrain her. Um, so anyway, he continued reciting and a uh, short while later, he heard another male voice speaking Arabic. Um, SubhanAllah. So he looked up and he <laughs> noticed that even the husband uh, was possessed by a jinn. And now the two of them were acting aggressively and trying to attack my friend. Um, luckily, alhamdulillah, he's a he's uh, proficient in martial arts, so he had to actually physically push them away. Um, at one point, he actually said to the brother, "Ijlis," and he kicked him, and the guy, the brother, went uh, across the room. Anyway, he continued reciting, and then he was conversing with these two jinns, and it transpired that the jinn said that um, somebody um, had sent them to cause conflict between the husband and wife. Uh, with the aim of uh, causing a divorce, subhanAllah. So my friend um, basically continued with the ruqya and managed to um, uh, get the jinns kind of to leave leave the, the husband and wife. And she, after this whole kind of scenario, um, they came back to their full consciousness and they had no recollection of what had happened. Um, and the brother had like felt some pain. Uh, so my friend apologized. I said, look, I had to, I had to like physically you know, push you away. Um, and uh, subhanAllah, so that was a first-hand experience of a friend um, of mine. And now obviously in that situation, um, the underlying issue was, was related to the supernatural, to the jinn. Um, so kind of superficially, if a, um, a psychiatrist with uh, either a Muslim psychiatrist who doesn't believe in kind of jinns and black magic would have just focused predominantly on, on a mental, uh, a Western mental health framework, and uh, probably um, recommended psychological therapy, maybe some medication. And um, that would have probably been the incorrect um, approach in this, in this case. So uh, obviously the, 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 the couple needed Rukia and they continue to have Rukia and alhamdulillah things settled down. Um, uh, another case where I've, I've been involved in was um, a young brother, probably 1920, uh, Hafid of Quran, mashallah, and uh, comes from a very uh, well educated family. So his father contacted me through a sheikh that I work with um, and asked me to uh, see his son because he'd been experiencing low mood and worryingly uh, suicidal thoughts. He'd actually attempted to commit suicide um, a couple of times, climbing onto the roof of the house, but alhamdulillah, his family managed to stop him. So um, the key salient points, like I mentioned, uh, very well adjusted, very well educated university student, a hafiz of Quran, regular with his salah. So I, I met with him and his father and um, essentially did my assessment, uh, like I mentioned, using the integrated approach. Alhamdulillah, there was no uh, jinn or evil eye issue. Uh, and basically this young man had, um, he was a perfectionist and he had done very well, obviously memorized Quran, was given a lot of praise for that from the community. And um, as he kind of progressed in his university education, he started uh, coming across um, a lot of atheists. Unfortunately, this has been the Muslim, Muslim one of the Muslim countries. Um, and he started having some doubts, um, SubhanAllah. And um, that started affecting his, his mood um, to the point where he was, uh, not sleeping, um, not eating, losing weight, not being able to concentrate, his academic um, performance deteriorated. 
uh, and then obviously uh, led to him having suicidal thoughts and wanting to hurt himself. Um, so in this case, um, the way I approached it is obviously um, kind of tackled some of the doubts, the shubuhat that he had. Um, and the ulama say that, you know, the, the cure for shubuhat is ilm and he mashallah have the Quran. So it was kind of just a, a point to uh, reflect on this issue and um, just talk about about the deen and talk about his iman and how, how strong he was in terms of, um, you know, with his salah and Quran. But the other aspect was he had biological symptoms of depression. Um, and we have the neurobiology model of depression, which is the monoamine theory. So usually there's a deficiency of a, a neurotransmitter called serotonin. Um, so I had a long discussion with him and his father, and he felt that he wasn't able to concentrate and um, that, you know, life was a big struggle for him. So we had, we kind of came to uh, an agreement for a trial of um, an antidepressant, fluoxetine, which is an SSRI, which boosts the levels of serotonin in the brain. And alhamdulillah, uh, by the decree of Allah, things improved, his mood uh, elevated. Um, I was in regular contact with him, offering him kind of uh, some psychological therapy, CBT-based approach, cognitive behavioral therapy, which essentially is um, a, a type of psychological therapy which divides um, things into uh, cognitions, thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, and looks at how all of those are interlinked. And somebody who's depressed tends to experience negative automatic thoughts, which affects uh, their self-esteem, self-confidence, uh, and then their actions. So. Um, I used that approach at, uh, alongside medication, and alhamdulillah, uh, he improved significantly to the point where after about six, seven, eight months, um, he was, we were able to wean him off the medication, and he, he was kind of back into the flow of things. So just two kind of examples, and, you know, I can talk for, for a long time, uh, inshallah, in further videos, and uh, I will give more examples uh, around trauma, uh, sexual abuse, um, attachment issues, um, substance abuse, which is a big, big problem. Um, so inshallah, I hope it was beneficial. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, allow, use me to um, benefit the Muslim community and um, accept this for, for his sake, inshallah. Um, okay, um, until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Abu Isa, over and out.